Hey, welcome. Um, welcome to our talk. Uh, right now, our talk is uh, it's, uh, using Salt Sack for automated incident and problem resolution. Um, you can go to the next slide. I'm uh, Matt Garrett. Uh, I work at the, uh, Clemson University. Um, that's actually, if you don't know where that's at, that's in, actually in South Carolina. And if you don't know where that is, it's on the east coast of, uh, of the United States. And Clemson, if you imagine South Carolina, it kind of looks like an upside down triangle. It's basically the furthest away from the ocean and still be in South Carolina. So all the way in that, in that upper left-hand corner. Uh, that's kind of where uh, Clemson's at. Uh, so a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm actually, not only in my work there, I also was a graduate of Clemson. I graduated from Clemson in 99 uh, with a degree in wildlife biology. Um, got married and then went to Purdue uh, for my wife to go to graduate school and I couldn't find a job in wildlife biology in the middle of Indiana. So then I went back to school and got a second undergrad in computer science and then a master's in computer technology. And in 2007, moved back to uh, Clemson and uh, started working in the uh, data center. Uh, first as just a Linux admin, um, was with Blackboard and then kind of, kind of migrated it over and into the healthcare system. And as of January 15th, I'm now the director of the healthcare information system, so it's kind of, Everything's kind of moving really fast right now. Um, and this right here is E, and I'll let her introduce herself. Hello, I'm E. Uh, okay, so I'm the technical lead for the HSIS team, and I'm also the crazy cat lady in our building. Uh, <laughs> I spend my time pretty much doing volunteer jobs for, you know, rescue cats, dogs, and I eat a lot of chocolates, lots of chocolates, <laughs> and I do lots of Linux and stuff that works. And so that's a little bit about us. So uh, I kind of told you exactly kind of where Clemson's at. And a lot of people, when we say that we're from Clemson, they always say, oh, uh, that was a bad game. On, uh, and it was like, yeah, we had a great season, bad ending. Um, and then, the, or the other one is the people who don't follow American football, they follow soccer, and they were also lost in the, in the actually in the championship game too. So we had two good seasons that kind of ended kind of, ugh. But um, Clemson University was actually, it's a land-grant university founded in, I think, 1889. Uh, when Thomas Green Clemson passed away, he bequeathed the land. Um, a year later, it became a university. Uh, it was an agriculture military school, and it's like the um, big in um, agriculture and engineering. Uh, so there's about 18,000 uh, 18, undergraduate students, 4,500 uh, graduate students, and about 5,000 staff and faculty. Um, I think that's a lot to say about Clemson. Not only is there sports, we actually have a really good programs too. <laughs> uh, the, uh, uh, we have a su uh, supercomputer. Uh, that right now, I think in the last top 500 was number 118 in the world. So I mean, a lot of uh, high performance computing goes on at Clemson. And also with the US News and World Report, I think Clemson's number 21 in public universities. Um, I think it's in the 60s with all universities. So it's a, a very strong school. Um, but kind of where we're at, we're in the uh, Clemson Computing and Information Technology Division, between five and 600 uh, employees. And specifically in the, in, the, in the direction of where I'm at is with the healthcare infrastructure services and there's about, there's about 20 members. That includes the Linux and Windows admins, mainframe admins, and also the yes. DBAs. And so in here, we're actually gonna, we're gonna do a demo. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get started on a demo because it takes 12 minutes to run. That way we can kind of get it started let it run in the background, and then we can kind of just kind of keep talking with this. So he's going to get the demo started, and then we can kind of keep going. How can I, how can I exit and show? How can I, okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply use the South Cloud module to deploy a brand new VM. And uh, when I deploy the brand new VM, it will take about five minutes for the VM to be built. And uh, in my script, I already, you know, push over the high state to run whatever, you know, the Clemson required, you know, uh, configuration for this VM, including uh, register to our spacewalk server and also register our, um, like, authentication, you know, um, method, and uh, including, you know, so many other difference. And by end of the high state, I put a state to call a reactor, which can, um, how to say it, call a reactor and uh, can uh, communicate with our IT help ticketing system to uh, automatically, once the VM is built, I'm going to automatically submit a ticket to our IT help uh, 
I can help uh, ticketing system. So I'm going to show this. Uh, it should take just a little bit minutes. We're actually uh, going to our dev IT help side. I, they didn't want us kind of polluting the production side. But it was a funny thing. This morning, I get a text <laughs> from E, and she's like, the dev site's down. And I'm like, well, we're going to production then. So this is our dev site. So I'm going to, you know, so here is the example you can see. Right here, I created one. It's like, you know, a couple of hours ago just to make sure you know, everything is working fine. So I'm going to automatically create this ticket when my high state, when the high state is finished. So I'm going to start the whole process will take about 12 minutes, five minutes for the you know, infrastructure VM to be built, about another seven or eight minutes for all the high states to be run. We probably have 20 states in there you know, to be finished. So right now I'm just going to, can you guys see? I'm going to, you know, uh, just to make sure. So I, okay, I don't have this one, so I'm going to just build it. I'm going to run it in a debug mode so you guys can see a little bit, you know, how this process is going on. Can you use the I'm using the South Cloud module. South Cloud, South Cloud uh, is We're actually using the VMware, uh, mm. yes. Uh, for those uh, uh, who saw the keynote yesterday, Nitten, who was up on the up on the stage, he actually works at Clemson also. He's like, I can throw something and hit him type deal. He's that close. And so when we need something, he he helped develop the uh, VMware uh, uh, cloud mo cloud module. And so basically, we're able to uh, we're able to use that for our VMware stuff. And I think his talk is right after this one. Uh, his talk is two forty five, I think. Okay. So if you want to find out more about that, you can talk to him. Yeah. Make it 2.45. So right now, I hope you can see, I probably have to make it a little bit smaller so you can see we are trying to, you know, allocate the storage and uh, we kind of technically record how much time. Uh, we can see how much time we spend to allocate the storage, usually 20 seconds, and then we need to install the VMware tools. It will take longer, maybe 70 seconds, and then we will automatically allocate the IP address and, you know, start the network for this server. So I'm going to go back to the slides, so let Matt to continue his you know, presentation. Okay. So I get the joy of actually kind of t telling where we started with SALT from. Um, so a little bit of history. So when I started at Clemson in 2007, I would say 90 to 95 percent of our machines were bare metal machines. And to actually install on these bare metal machines, one of us would take a crash cart, plug it up, plug a CD in, and next, 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 and then we go to the next one. We just kind of keep kind of parsing it all out. Um, over the next few years, we went from about 90, 95 percent um, uh, bare metal to about 99% about now today of virtual. Um, however, a lot of the documentation was a lot of people still did the, I'm going to put a virtual CD in the virtual player in VMware and do next, 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 next. And so what had happened was some of us started using templates and some of them didn't use templates. And so all of a sudden, our, we were just totally inconsistent across everything. Um, it, if I build a machine and someone else build a machine, they're probably not going to be exactly the same. Um, the other, other issue is uh, in our official documentation, it was install um, everything, whereas we started customizing. Hey, we don't, want, we don't want the kitchen sink. Oh, and it was, we were Red Hat. Sorry, I didn't say that at the beginning. Uh, we, uh, we used Red Hat Linux on there. Um, and so back in 2012, we, uh, um, myself and one other person, his name is Kevin Stone, uh, was designated to start an engine room. And what the engine room was to do was to uh, fire up OpenStack and then they said, they said actually something wrong. They said, and we want you to configure it with Puppet. And so we're like, okay, we're gonna do this. And they didn't say configuration management, they specifically said Puppet. So what we did was we went up there and we, uh, we neither of us had used Puppet before, so we, we had to uh, focus very hard on how to, how to, how to get Puppet working and, and all this information. And uh, about two months later, we actually got it working. And so that was, I guess that was four man months to get, to get Puppet working with OpenStack. Um, to de I'm sorry? I believe it was Grizzly at the time. Or did we do Folsom? It was 2000, it was the end of 2012. 
is either Folsom or Grizzly. Um, and so we, uh, we, worked, uh, we worked very, very diligently. We passed it off to our customer on time. And then we sat back and said, that was very painful. And we didn't, and the issue was, was not that, um, I mean, we were beginning Puppet, I, so I can't really, I don't want to bash Puppet or anything, but it was, we were beginning, and it took very, very, a lot amount of time. And then we realized that if we don't change something very quickly, then we're going to become, we're going to have to write Puppet, we'll be the Puppet Masters for forever. No one's going to learn this, because it took us quite literally two months of, of solid time to do this. Um, so all of a sudden, we said, we, we said, we can't do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to start looking at other things. And the first thing we looked at was Chef, because we were looking at Crowbar. And I think Crowbar used Chef at the time. And, and it, it, was, it was really the same situation. It was a lot, this huge learning curve to try to get things going. Um, and then all of a sudden, we, somebody mentioned SaltStack. And the problem with SaltStack was the name. Because we thought, OK, we already have OpenStack. We've heard of CloudStack. We've heard of DevStack. We don't need another stack. We need, we need configuration management. And then we actually read the documentation. It was like, hey, this is exactly what we need. And so from that day forward, we would actually never referred to it as salt stack because when we said that, people would say the exact same thing. It was like, hey, we already have OpenStack. Why do we need another stack? Um, so we just, at Clemson, we just say salt. We, don't, we never say salt stack anymore. Um, so then, uh, so when we started, that was, I saw, I was going through my emails last night and figuring out, I was trying to figure out what version we started on. And it was actually in, I see in our, our status reports, I think it was uh, February 18th, 2013. It was either 0.11 or 0.12 is where, where we started with, with SaltStack. Uh, uh, Matt, yes. I'm sorry I have to interrupt a little bit. Yes. So the VM field is already finished. I just want to show the process right now. So earlier, if you see, I tried to test pin this VM. It, it was not there. So right now, it is there. And uh, we can do is simply.run. I'm just going to check how many, you know, meaning process, uh, so the process is running. So you should see three, yes, because one is the original meaning on running on that host. The second one is what I'm checking, and the third one, the high state is pushing the states over. So, and I'm going to show one more thing before going back to Matt. Oops. If I do a grants.get build ticket, it's nothing there because the ticket has not created yet. So I'm going to check this command again after we come back. I'm sorry, Matt. Oh, no problem. Okay. Oh, go back. Oh, go back. All right, so then, uh, so that kind of fast, flash, fast forwards up to 2013-ish. Um, we then started, uh, and, then, and then that next year, we got a new deputy CIO. And he looked at our environment, and he saw that in the, in the group that we were in, there were basically we was just two groups. It was a Linux, Linux group and a Windows group. And we had to manage all these servers as Linux and, and Windows. And he noticed that one of our major contracts is with uh, the, Department, the Department of Health and Human Services. And it was whoever was on call that week would basically have to manage those machines. And we, they weren't getting the service they needed. So the very first thing he did was, OK, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to um, split up the teams. So we're going to have three teams now. Um, each one's going to have win Windows and Linux people on each one. So one of them was the core infrastructure team that's kind of deals with the, getting the ESXs up. Um, getting like st uh, allocating storage and all that kind of all that kind of stuff. Uh, one is uh, campus side, which they deal specifically with Clemson University, and then the healthcare side, which is the team that we're on. Um, that uh, we do nothing with the actual r everyday running of Clemson. We are only focusing on external contracts. Is what our jobs are with the HCIS. Ah, so that's where we kind of flash forward now to this time last year when we came to SaltStack last year. And so all we did with SaltStack was we were, we were testing our configurations, uh, deploying machines, and trying to get them exactly the same so we could deploy one or 100, and they would always be consistent. Um, there was, uh, and that's, that was the main goal of, of SaltStack at the time. Um, and we thought we had done great. And then we came to the SaltStack conference last year. And then we saw what other people were doing. We're like, whoa. That, that, that was pretty cool when we, I mean, and so he and I were flying back to South Carolina um, and we basically had this sheet of paper, which I wish we'd have brought. I still have it in my desk of like, these are the things we want to do this year. I mean, we have to get this stuff done. And so, <clears throat> so that last year was kind of an eye-opening experience. And so we're like, we, we, we were just basically scratched the surface of salt 
last year, and now, we, hey, what are we gonna really do? Um, just another info, we've got uh, roughly 800 servers, uh, we think 80, 20 Linux, uh, Linux Windows, and 99% virtual, and all of our Linux uh, machines are managed by Salt, and I don't think most, I don't think any of our Windows machines are. Not yet. So we're working on that right now. So what is our problem? And I guess this is what we're here to, that was all history, and I apologize, that might have been a little long-winded for our history. Um, our major client is the South Carolina Department of Health and Human, Human Services. And there is, it, the build process was painfully slow. Um, uh, uh, you'll see on our next slide is that to build a server, it, it takes tickets upon tickets upon tickets, so you have to do one thing and then another uh, just to actually build a server when you can see that to build a server took five minutes. But to do all the all, tickets after the fact, I mean, it took like a week how many tickets we had to go through. Um, um, so here it is, a you know, client request, a, and this is not all of them. I mean, we've kind of got rid of a lot of the, the cruff here. Okay, you have to request the build, put it in our help system, assign uh, site ad admins to them. This building the VMs, this is where you have like, I think we've counted every single VM takes about 10 tickets. Um, first to open them, then to update them, and then to close them. So you're talking every single server is, I guess, touching a ticket 30 times or 30 different tickets, whatever it is. Um, you have to put statuses in that. At the very, very end, you get to close them. And, and it was driving us bananas. Um, I actually have, I think I might have a, a disease, and it might be contagious. Uh, it's, I think it's called ticketitis. I hate it. And everybody who comes and talks to me, they realize they start hating tickets too. Um, and I apologize. I think I'm a carrier. I'm so sorry. Um, and so we had, that was the thing we said, we have got to get out of this business. This is, this is, this is killing the team. And the main reason why, and here's why that really came to the forefront last year, is we were on uh, Red Hat Linux, and we were switching over to Oracle Linux. And we were getting ready to build, I think we built 116? 116 about that. Yeah. 116 new machines, and we were like, okay, that's gonna be over 1,000 tickets that I'm gonna have to manually touch. And I said, that is not gonna happen. Um, and I cannot have my team doing that, so. You want to go here, or? Yeah, well, yeah, we'll go that way. Okay. So here's what we actually did to help us help us get there. Um, first, we're using the, the cloud module, uh, the, uh, the VMware cloud module, using state state modules, um, the reactor system runners, and using actually the Python clients to update grains. And then finally, we have been using just straight up Python to actually hit the web services for our IT help or our, our help service. So what it actually boiled down to is we got to get, get rid of a lot of steps. Um, we still have a couple of manual tickets that we still have to take care of. Um, what we have to do, um, one of the big things that is still a, a roadblock is we have to open up a security ticket to say where we can put, to, before we can get an IP address, before we can actually build a server. So that's still a manual process, which I really want to get rid of. Um, but then after the fact, there is no more. Uh, we used to have to build a build ticket, and we kind of we kind of was able to skate around this issue. We said, well, instead of building a build ticket, can I do a built ticket? And then that kind of I don't know how they let us that fly. So that flew. Um, we have uh, after we build, we also do a monitoring ticket to go to the monitoring team. We have a a ticket that goes to the backup team to say, hey, put this in backups. We have to build, uh, put in the CMDB, and I'm probably forgetting a, a bunch more because we don't do it anymore. Um, and then all, and at the very end, automatically close these tickets. Um, and so I think we're, uh, now it's going back to the demo time? Uh, we can, it's not, I just checked. So, it's so while we were doing this, this book came out and I bought it just because of the name. Um, it was automate the boring stuff with Python, it really should be automate the boring stuff with, with SaltStack. We were just, we had to get rid of the, the time waste that we were, that we were working on. Yeah, it's demo time, it's right on time. So I just checked, it's just finished like 30 seconds ago. So here is what I'm doing. I already run the test.pin for you guys, so, so you know that the VM is there. So we, in our states, we create a, direc a directory under uh, slash etc called cloud build. So we record the majority, you know, the important states to make sure whether they are finished. So I just list them here, and right now you should be able to see, you know, on 13, uh, it's Eastern time, on 13.55, the build, the high state starts. It's not the VM build, it's the high, start, high state starts. And we run over several states 
Um, these are not include the every states we run. Some small states we don't really check whether they finished or not. And you can see eventually on 14.04, we finished everything. And uh, right now, if, okay, so earlier I run the, I tried to retrieve the grant, it's not there, it's nothing. So right now I'm trying to retrieve it. We got a ticket number and we got a status of this ticket. So right now I'm going to go back to this system and you can see this is the last ticket, one, two, three, seven, four. I didn't touch it. And here it says one, two, three, seven, five. So let's see what is there. I'm going to do a quick search so I know what I need to see. Come on, come on. Okay. So the funny thing is we were running this last night and everything was great and this morning I get a text from <laughs> E and she's like, uh, the dev site's down. <laughs> okay, so the ticket is there and I can bring her up uh, to let you know how this comes. Yeah, this is the part that we really hate the system, you know, it takes forever to load the information. Okay, so this ticket is automatically controlled by SOD and the Python API. And you can see we created with our service account and uh, we build the service name, how many CPUs, how, many, how much memories and the IP address and also, you know, some basic, uh, basic information. Those are the information we got from the events, from the reactor, we retrieved the events data. And uh, right now, so this is a fully qualified format of the ticket we can bill our client for, you know, how much resource we put on this. And I already pre-assigned, you know, um, assigned this, this ticket to which team and now they assigned the status to us. And uh, let's go back to And so the format of this, this is what the build the ticket looked like. So we were basically mimicking everything that was done manually before. Just let's all do it so that no one really knows who did what. The only reason you knew it was that is you could see that it was done by our API, not, not by anything else. Not by any real person. Uh, actually, in our uh, real building process, uh, at the same time, we created three tickets. We create a build ticket, we create a backup request to our storage team to request the backing up, you know, for, this, for these VMs. And we also create a monitoring ticket to our monitoring team to tell them there is a new VM here, please start, you know, your monitoring process. So in this demo, I only create a build because, you know, those are so something I submit a ticket I cannot control over there. So and this is just pretty much we are using the same thing. So, so, and so uh, just another side note uh, on that is uh, when we were getting ready to build these 100, 116, it was 116, right? 116, ah, yeah. It was 116 <laughs> machines. I went to each other, I went to all the other groups and said, um, all right, we're getting ready to build 116 machines. Um, you're getting ready to get a bunch of tickets. Um, this is coming and we said, we're, this is coming, I think we said, one week before our due date is when we're gonna build these servers. Um, if you want us to, we've got a month, we can help you automate your side too. That way you don't have to get these tickets. And every single group said, oh, don't worry about it. We'll, well, if it's painful enough, then we'll automate. So we said, okay, and uh, they, we did it and haven't looked back since. And uh, actually that's another joke. So when we build those tickets, you know, we technically we sent three emails to each team because one VMs with three emails, build emails, notification, backup request, notification, and monitoring notification. And the people come to me and says, e, you are automating your stuff, but you spam our <laughs> mailing box. So that was very funny. Okay, so here is, uh, here's the thing. So I'm going to introduce a little bit what we do here. So for everybody, if you are uh, familiar with Salt Cloud, so this is a very simple salt cloud map file. Uh, I'm not going to introduce for details because we're going to have the uh, VMware salt cloud, you know, talk in this afternoon. Just for example, this is our sample standard cloud mapping file. And uh, we will have more complicated one if like, for example, if we, we have to build an Oracle database server or something. And I'm going to show you, uh, And here you will see, uh, we have these many reactors. Uh, some of them are not really related with today's talk. There are a couple of things is, once we got a VM created, we can automatically have CMDB tickets in there. This is kind of new, we didn't really use it 
in our standard building processes. And I'm going to show you the same DB tickets later. And uh, also here is, this is a flower top. So once we have the build, the whole high state is finished, we send this tag back to our master and we'll trigger this state, which we will create the ticket. So, uh, so let's go back so, to. And one of the things you don't see here because this is on our was one of our test servers is we also the mon the the uh, backup client. So what happens is the backup ticket goes to the or backup ticket goes to the backup team. They put it inside the um, put it inside a, 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 a legato to back up, and then once they get it in there, they run a the, they run the first import, and then they send us back the ticket saying, "Hey, go test a backup." And so what we did is we wrote a state to go test the backup for us and close the ticket. So it's just like they just run. Just send it off for us. Okay, so I, here is, yeah, I hope it's not done. I'm just let this loading for a little bit. Oh, it's coming up. Okay, and really, so okay, so the backup was really what we, uh, what our what our state does for the backup. All it does was uh, go into the server. Um, you take the the SHA two fifty six sum of the Anaconda file, delete it, restore the Anaconda file, check the check the sum again. Did it? Did I, was I able to actually restore something all the way back? And if it actually comes back successfully, then update the ticket saying that we're good. Oops. Oh, did we kill the connection? Uh, I, okay, I'm not sure. Looks like I lost the VPN potentially. Oh, no, I'm still here. No, this is not gonna work. I think I lost the VPN connection. Yeah, I lost the VPN connection. So sorry, guys. Uh, I have to try to reconnect. Okay, good. And I have to, yeah, log in again. Okay, so I'm going to just try to get the grant again. Oh, oh, sorry, that's still good. That's that's not building yet. So zero one. Okay, so I'm going to check the. I was going to check the same DB ticket. Okay. Yep. So the same DB ticket is here. And uh, how do we search that? I believe you can go up and just say the search. Here. Yep. Uh, what's the number of it? Four five two two. Four five. Are there? Oh. So the it's not there yet. Always good. No, it should be go to the CI types. I don't. I don't know if that works. Go to CI types. Uh, where's CI? Oh, here CI types. And get rid of everything. Get rid of everything. And just only put over the hardware. And we put the hardware. Nope, that's software. Hardware. And this is another reason we don't like messing with this. It's kind of, it's painful. And uh, save. Uh, attributes. Oh, attributes. And then say search to what to ch search on. Yeah. Where is it? Click it now. This one. And then go down to name. Not CI name, but all the way down to name. Class name? No, no, no keep going now. There's name. Uh, right there. Uh, okay. And then say, you can say begins with. Slash of CF. Can we do no, that? No, no, you just say begins with. Uh, no, just click down right there. Here it begins with. Yeah. Okay, good. So, okay. Apply? Uh, apply, and then go to results. Where's the result? Oh, right here. Okay, so we got two. We got this many, and this one, let's see, which one is this? Four, five, two, two. Come on. Four, yeah, five, this two, is two. a four five two two. Yeah. So this is. Do we have a time here? We can. Yeah, right there, at the top. Um, Eleven fifty six. Yes. So so this oh, is the same DB ticket we just created. <laughs> Sorry, it's taking me a while to find it. Uh, okay, so so here's the situation. So I showed our Mac file, and I'm going to show. Uh, I showed our reactor file, and right now I'm going to show some of the. Uh, I'm going to show our states. That is very simple. Uh, 
So it is very simple because I already showed you in our VM building process, once our high state is done, we put a file over there in that directory. So all I did is confirm the VM is already built and then we send this event from the new. And with this event, we will call, we will, ca we will call the reactors, sorry, reactors, shortcut, create, click it, okay, I'm sorry. So this is very simple. When this reactor state got called, we call this Python script and passing by the event data, this is the meaning ID and this is our you know, ticket title and our building description which I already pre-built as, I can show you here, actually, CD library set, the ticket. So that is which we pre-built, we got the CPU, we got the, you know, the uh, disk size, we got the RAM from the VM, the VM pre-built grants. So those are the information we're passing by for this ticket. And that's how our ticket doing, uh, ticket works. So, and I'm going to just show a couple more things here. Let's go back to our ticket. So this is how the ticket is built and assigned to the team. So once we finish all the task, come on. Once we finish all this task, you know, here, we like to update the ticket or we like to even close it. So right now the status is assigned. And this is our information. So what we can do is, uh, we can just go to this grant, SLS, TD1, state, that SLS, update, ticket, so this is our state to update the ticket. And we also fire a grant, fire a event, you know, waiting for the, you know, just put some description. This is just a mimic for this demo today. You know, we can put more complicated information over there if we have to. So I run this and right now if I check the ticket grant again, you see the number is still there, but the status already changed from a side to pending. And if we go back here, we open this ticket again. I should refresh that. Yeah, so the status is already pending. And uh, you know, we put one more says, you know, waiting for other subtasks to be finished. And then we can also do the same thing. I'm not going to test because I know it will work. simply close this ticket. And then if we check the grant, see it is closed. Uh, okay, from here. And let me open this again. So the ticket is closed and we finished everything from the beginning to the end, which required us manually to log into this browser web GUI to entry, but we can do everything from the start. Yes, SLS, all tasks are completed, closing the ticket. And uh, what I'm demo right now is just simple, you know, one VMs. So we can parallelly maximum, we can do eight to build the, the VM. We can build eight VMs at the same time and have eight ticket, you know, building ticket process. So eight is the uh, is a limit by via, by that by VMware. Um, it's um, and so it's it's not that it was we haven't seen it bogged down anything. It's just that's the limit that's in VMware. So any questions? So uh, yeah. okay. So uh, some other things we do uh, that we didn't do today is we're doing the backup tickets um, and then showing the testing of that. And really, those are really just salt states that just kind of go and do a test. And once you, if you pass, if everything was successful at the very end, you kick off the ticket that says, hey, I'm done, I've already tested it, we're good. Um, we also, uh, we link all the tickets together so that not under the build ticket, there's also you know, the IP ticket, there's this um, um, uh, backup ticket, there's the CMB ticket, there's all these tickets that are all linked into one, so you can just go to the, just to the top build one. Um, and automatically verify, open and close. 
And then we also, yeah, then you also saw the Update CMDB. The, the CMDB. Yes. So are there any questions? No, the the tick the tick is uh, number where where store as a grant in the mini. Yes, but the tick is a detailed the tick is info like how much you know the contents like how much size how much size of the memory or something is sent from the grant. Actually, let me show you this. Um, I don't know how to answer that. It's yes or no. It's saved in a grant with the built-in grant from the thought like the RAM or something. We don't really create something to save. The whole ticket's content. Am I making sense so far? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just yeah. trying to make sure that, like, as you make the changes to the number, that it's right in there. Mm -hmm. So it might be more or less updated by the time you get to the end of the grant cycle. Uh, okay, I think I understand your question. So right now, is we don't really save every ticket with these VMs on the other grant because some tickets we still have to do it manually. But with majority in our official process, we store three tickets number in this grant. One is the build tickets, the other is the legato backup, the third one is the monitoring, and the same DB one going to be the fourth, right? You know, it's going to happen right, right after we go back. We do have other requests. For example, if our client send us an email like six months later says, I need to increase the memory for this ticket. That process is still manually doing, yeah. We don't really, you know, start this. And so we can always link all the tickets. So we really only need one, that, that big top one, because we can link every ticket after that to that one. So as long as we can get to the one, we can always find, we can audit it the rest of the way out. Questions? And so then at the very end, uh, at the very end, uh, when we actually destroy the machine, oh, yes. uh, what should so happen is you take the CMDB ticket, and we can't actually delete out of the CMDB, and so what we've done was we've moved it, I think we call it surplus, which is kind of weird for a virtual machine. It's, it's gone, but it's surplus now. Mm -hmm. So if you actually delete it. So I'm going to delete this server right now. Am I right? Mm -hmm. no, okay. So this actually does a lot of other stuff too. Um, so I'm going to delete whatever you know we put over there. But the ticket is still out there in the mm -hmm. same place. So here you can see it's powering off the VM. Yep, it's gone. So right now, if I try this, it should complain says this VM is not there. Yep. And the CMDB should switch it over to surplus. Oh, let's see. I have to delete that one. Oh, now we gotta search for it again. Search for it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is there any other questions? Yes, sir. Isn't this the original VM plus new operation for this for the machine that's there? Like, for example, if you have a hard disk space that's been just you know just replaced or whatnot, could that be just the source that? That's what we. That's one of the plans that we want to go back and actually start solving that too. So having a uh, have it dynamically spin up more machines if you need if your load's high is what is what you're asking for. That's uh, yes, that is a goal. Yes, I, I think I, uh, uh, so, and when I talked to about the very beginning, how we still have to do this manual process of getting security approval to put an IP address out to do DNS and get an IP, do all that, that's still, so we can't like spin up a new machine in the middle of the night if we need it, because that still takes a manual. So we're trying to get around that, and hopefully we'll be able to say yes, we can do that now. Um, and that's really where our goal is, is that if there is a high load on something, a spin up another server, put it in under the load balancer, then take the other one out of commission, and then leave it to the side so in the morning we can go and look, okay, what happened to this machine? And if it, and the idea is like, hey, if this happens a couple times in a night, maybe you should wake someone up then, not the first time, see if it kind of, see if we uh, even out after that. That's what we'd like to have happen. It's not there yet. I was trying to find it. it Oh, so you surplus. Surplus. So I think this one is from. Oh, this that's is this is one. not our server. This is, this yeah. is the server for this afternoon. So yeah, that's Nitten's. That's Nitten's server there. Don't delete that so one. So it's still active. I didn't delete yours. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? 
and we, we do have a demo, or not demo, we do have a video, you know, record every, you know, technical process I did today. Just, <laughs> it was prepared just in case, you know, something is done today, we couldn't run a live demo. So I think I'm going to, I'm going to pass that to the, to the conference, and it will be uh, downloadable, and uh, you guys are welcome to, you know, email us or, you know, review that, send your questions to us. So here is our email address. Else? Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you all very much. Oh, okay. sorry, you there's one right there. So, for example, I think Rick is sitting over there. He's our client. He has to email us originally. It's our process for the you know healthcare system. He has to officially email our team. Says he needs a VM to do what kind of job he wants to do, and then we will decide. We will we start to negotiate with security to see which security VM we can put this server in, and then once we have the specifics of this VM. And we will put them all here. And also, E has written a script that actually builds those map files. So it just takes in, takes in some options and has some sane defaults if we don't specify something to actually build those map files out for us. So, so it could be as easy as putting a web page up and doing some clicking and then you're kind of build those map files for us. So here is, you know, we just create this map file. And uh, I, as I mentioned earlier, this is a very simple one. We will have more completed one, you know, when we have deal the real VMs. So here is we only specify the VMs, the, the you know, type of um, customized grants, whether create a ticket or not. Sometimes, you know, we build a VM, we send a ticket, and it turns out something wrong, or DBA will come back and says, please rebuild it. So in that case, we build, re, we rebuild this VM, but we put this flag as a false, so we do not duplicate the ticket creation. And uh, to answer the initial question is, we will put a more specific here, like how large the disk is, how large the memory is, or whatever you know is they need. So have you all worked with Salt Cloud? It, it's really cool because right here, uh, you didn't. There's not a lot in there. There's actually we have a defaults file too. That this map just overwrites some of those defaults. And so, like, I don't know if you want to show that. Can we show that? I think we can. Uh, let's see. Okay, so cloud profiles. Oops. Profiles. Okay, so we only have one profiles, but our profile is going to, you know. Oh, wait a minute. We can't see that. There's a, there, there's a password in there. No, no, there's no password here. Oh, yes, there's a password here. So I'm not going to show this. <laughs> Thank you. We put a simple password so we knew that if that password was still there, we knew our states didn't run. So we so. have the high state run can well change that password and uh, you know to make the authentication works. And but for the simple VM, we do put a very simple one over there. So our security team said, I mean, when we showed the security team that, they're like, "Whoa, you got a simple password!" And they were like, "Yes, we do." Um, but that's the very first state is to change that password, the root password on the machine. Other questions? So right. We are right on time. Awesome. Lunch time. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Oh, if you all wouldn't mind uh, reviewing us in the app, uh, that'd be awesome. Thank you.